We're analyzing Pioneer Natural Resources stock ticker PXD to see if this company is a great business on sale. This analysis is around 10 minutes. It's going to be intense, but it's going to be worth it. We're using the Select 6 analysis to look at the most telling financial metrics before estimating a fair value for Pioneer Natural Resources. Then we're giving a final rating to the business. There will be a key bonus metric along the way that just might be the tipping point when analyzing Pioneer Natural Resources for your stock portfolio. Before we get into these valuable metrics, let's understand Pioneer stock performance. Right now, Pioneer trades for $207 per share. Year to date, their stock price is down 6%. Right now, Pioneer Natural Resources pays a huge 11.10% dividend yield. That's insane compared to most businesses. Their average dividend yield is in addition to their returns in their stock. In the last five years, Pioneer is compounding at 2% annually. The company's up nearly three and a half times from their lows in spring of 2020. In the last 10 years, they're also compounding at 2% annually. Going back before the global financial crisis, Pioneer Natural Resources is compounding at 9.5% annually. Their average dividend yield, again, is in addition to these returns. Pioneer trades $67 below their 52-week high. The company is up $30 from their 52-week low. Just under 2% of their shares are sold short. Pioneer is a big business. They have a $59 billion market cap. But the burning question is, why should we be paying close attention to Pioneer Natural Resources? Headquartered in Irvine, Texas, Pioneer Natural Resources is an independent oil and gas exploration and production company focusing on the Permian Basin in Texas. At year-end 2022, Pioneer's proven reserves were 2.4 billion barrels of oil equivalent, with net production for the year of 650 million barrels of oil equivalent per day. Oil and natural gas liquids represented 79% of production. Now with that understanding, let's get into the numbers. Starting with metric number one, we want their average return on capital in the last five years to be above 14%. The average business earns about a 7% return on capital. Looking for a benchmark that's double this can build in margin of safety based on the quality of the business. Pioneer Natural Resources as an oil exploration and production company is going to see its returns fluctuate with the price of oil. That's shown here where their returns were almost negative in 2020 as the price of oil went negative. Since then, as oil has rebounded, their returns have also risen. They earned 31% returns on capital in their last fiscal year. When these are averaged out, Pioneer earns 13.4% returns in a given year. That's very close to our benchmark, but just below it. While well above an average business, this is an X on metric number one. Metric number two, we're looking for growth to go with their high returns on capital. We want to see revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth. This is all or nothing. All three need to be up for this to be a check. We'll also include their numbers up until today in our calculations. In this time, Pioneer's revenues have more than doubled. Their earnings are up seven times and their free cash flows have gone from being negative to positive. There were a couple of acquisitions that really fueled this growth, which we'll touch on in just a little bit. This is a big check on metric number two. Metric number three, we're looking at Pioneer Natural Resources from the view of an individual shareholder. We want to see earnings per share growth in the last five years. This has been the case as their earnings are up seven times. By the same token, Pioneer has diluted shareholders by 46%. This came from two huge acquisitions made in 2021. They acquired Parsley Energy for $4.5 billion and Double Point Energy for $6.4 billion. With nearly $10 billion in acquisitions in 2021 alone, that was about 20% of the company's market cap. Even with their dilution though, their earnings growth outpaces this. This is a check on metric number three. Metric number four, we want to see something similar. We're looking for free cash flow per share growth in the last five years. With their free cash flows being negative in 2018 and positive today, their free cash flow growth outpaces their shareholder dilution. This is another check on metric number four. To recap where we stand currently, through four metrics, we have three checks and only one X for Pioneer Natural Resources. Again, that X was pretty close to our benchmark. What does the rest of our analysis look like for Pioneer? There's still one vital piece missing. You might think having good returns on capital and nailing growth is the key, but we haven't touched on the one thing that I believe sets Pioneer Natural Resources apart, which is having these without using a lot of debt. Metric number five, we want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the sum of their free cash flows in their last five fiscal years. In this time, Pioneer has grown their net debt. They ended last year with $4.6 billion of net debt, 
Right now, they have about $5 billion worth of net debt. In this time, they've generated $10.5 billion worth of free cash flow, including $7.4 billion worth in their last fiscal year. This easily supports their debt position. A big check here on metric number five. In their last 12 months, they've generated $6.9 billion of free cash flow. They could pay off all of their debt in under a year using their free cash flows. This seems like a very strong financial position. Before we get to the first of two different valuation methods for Pioneer, it's time for our bonus. As our bonus, we're looking at Pioneer Natural Resources dividend profile. Right now, Pioneer pays a huge 11.10% dividend yield. That's way above the dividend yield you'd get from most other businesses. People make mistakes by blindly chasing dividends. We want their dividends to be supported by their free cash flows. That's been the case in four of the last five years. 2018 was the only exception. As their free cash flows have really taken off, especially after 2020 alongside their acquisitions, Pioneer has grown their dividend payouts. Their dividends heavily depend on their free cash flows, but they've been supported in their last four fiscal years. They're supported today. While this is a snapshot of their last five years of performance, it's no guarantee for the future. Pioneer seems to support their dividends using their free cash flows. This is a check on our bonus. The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want Pioneer's average five-year free cash flow divided by their enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this gives a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. It's the first of two different ways we're estimating a fair value for Pioneer. Right now, Pioneer Natural Resources has a $54 billion enterprise value. This accounts for both their market cap and their net debt position. It gives a perspective similar to it being a private company. In the last five years, we learned they generated 10 $10.6 billion of free cash flow, meaning in an average year they generate about $2.1 billion of free cash flow. Keep in mind that's not fully including their acquisitions, as those were made just two years ago. So that affects this average. When their $2.1 billion average five year free cash flows are divided by their $54 billion enterprise value, we get around a 3.9% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield. On a current basis, Pioneer produced $6.9 billion of free cash flow in their last 12 months. When that's divided by their $54 billion enterprise value, it gives us a 12.8% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield. While that's way above the risk premium we're looking for, on an average basis, their yields coming in at about the same as the 10-year treasury, which is down from our risk premium, meaning for Pioneer Natural Resources on metric number six, this is an X. Don't just throw this business out. We still need to estimate their fair value per share. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Pioneer Natural Resources, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to estimate their fair value per share. A DCF model is based on the predictability of a company's free cash flows. Like any model in any discipline, its outputs are sensitive to its inputs. We're starting with an average of their last three fiscal years worth of free cash flow, then using historical assumptions to grow these into the future. Keep in mind this three-year average does not fully include their acquisitions. Only two of these three years are included by their acquisitions. If we assume they grow these three-year free cash flows at a rate of 5% annually for the next 10 years, then assuming that this growth rate is cut and they're growing at 3% annually for the following decade, if we add in their tangible book value, which gives an estimate of their net worth, if we want a 15% rate of return, which is what Warren Buffett's looking for from his investments, at today's valuation multiples, if these are the same in 20 years, an estimate of Pioneer Natural Resources fair value is around $219 per share. That's $12 above their current stock price, meaning there could slightly be margin of safety in the business. There are some key points to keep in mind. Pioneer has not been that predictable of a company in its past. This is because they're a commodity producer and they operate in a cyclical industry. Also, the company has made a number of big acquisitions in recent years that have really supercharged their growth. You'd want to look at the operational effectiveness of the business as well. This discount rate is an estimate of total returns to shareholders based on their free cash flows. It's already including their huge dividend yield and has a small amount of room for an increase in their stock price. Most importantly, this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Consult with your financial advisor before making any investment decision. In just a minute, we'll give our final rating to Pioneer Natural Resources. But we have to address something first. We've covered the numbers, but the qualitative factors may be even more important for Pioneer. What are they? Well, let's find out. Starting with the factors supporting a long thesis, number one, Pioneer has a rock solid balance sheet and is able to generate free cash flows even during periods of very weak commodity prices. 
Number two, the firm intends to target a 10% total return for shareholders via its base dividend, a variable dividend with a payout of up to 75% of free cash flows, and 5% annual production growth. Number three, Pioneer's low-cost Permian Basin activities enable it to generate stronger margins and returns than most other independent oil producers. But we'd be remiss if we didn't cover the negatives as well. Looking at the factors supporting a short thesis, number one, Pioneer's impressive yield is related to the impact of high oil prices on its variable dividend and it's not maintainable throughout the commodity cycle. Number two, the firm has strengthened its balance sheet by issuing convertible debt, which could dilute value to shareholders. Number three, production growth could outpace midstream capacity additions in the Permian Basin, causing bottlenecks and volatile basis differentials. Also, back in April, it was reported that ExxonMobil may be trying for a mega deal in which they would acquire Pioneer Natural Resources. It's still something that may be on the table. There you have it for a balanced perspective of some of the qualitative factors for Pioneer. Now it's time to give our rating. In analyzing Pioneer Natural Resources, stock ticker PXD, we learned this oil producer has grown by a lot in the last five years, especially in the last couple of years on the backs of some big acquisitions made in 2021. They're earning above average returns on capital below but very close to our benchmark. They've grown by a lot and outpaced their shareholder dilution with their growth. They also use a reasonable amount of debt compared to their free cash flows. They have a dividend target and they've supported their dividends in their last four fiscal years, including today. Although that does vary based on their free cash flows, it's probably a prudent capital allocation decision from management, especially if they have small production targets. It's worth reiterating this analysis is not financial advice. Pioneer free, Pioneer's free cash flow to enterprise value yields may or may not be attractive compared to the yield of the 10-year treasury. On a current basis, it looks like they're giving a risk premium, but they're only about in line on average. When we performed our discounted cash flow analysis, if today's multiple are the same 20 years from now based on those assumptions if you want a 15% rate of return an estimate of pioneer natural resources fair value per share is around $219 that's $12 above the company's current stock price again this is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security consult with a financial advisor before making any investment decision Looking at all the factors of our analysis, Pioneer Natural Resources looks like an excellent candidate for further research. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to like it, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, share your thoughts about Pioneer, and let me know what business to look at next in the comments below. Thanks for learning about Pioneer Natural Resources with me, and have a great day.